Hey, welcome to Tighten Up Today. It's your boy CD back again with another episode. Today, I'm going to bring you the most up-to-date transactions. Got to catch you up from last week. And then I'll also give you a quick rundown on the injury and practice reports from yesterday. And we'll go into a preview of Week 8 Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Tennessee Titans. Coming home to Nashville, Nissan Stadium, Sunday, 12 o'clock Central Time, 1 o'clock on the East Coast. I'm already hyped up, but we got some time. No need to delay. Let's get down to it. All right, now welcome back. Let's go ahead and knock out these transactions. On 19 October, Brent Urban, defensive end, was waived by the Tennessee Titans and picked up, claimed immediately by the Chicago Bears. He's out playing football in the Windy City. Also on the 19th, we went ahead and signed from our practice squad outside linebacker Derek Robertson and then waived defensive end Matt Wilkerson. Three days later, we went ahead and waived outside linebacker Derek Robertson and re-signed Matt Wilkerson. Nonetheless, it's done. Matt Wilkerson's on the squad now. All right, so practice. We're talking about practice now. Practice injuries. The injury list is long. Um, so let's get down to it. Wednesday, linebacker Jayon Brown was limited on Wednesday's practice with a groin. He's questionable. We also have Jarrell Casey was limited for practice on Wednesday with a shoulder. He's also questionable. Jack Conklin was limited in practice on Wednesday as well with a thigh questionable. Corey Davis, kind of different, was um, a did not practice at all on Wednesday with the illness. It's showing him questionable. I'm hoping it's a, it's a quick bug. It'll go away um, by kickoff. We'll wait and see and catch up on that. Offensive guard Nate Davis, on the other hand, was limited in practice with ribs, and he's also questionable. Linebacker Rashawn Evans, Listed as questionable with a shoulder. He was also limited. Linebacker Sharif Finch. Luckily, he's at practice. As we know, the past couple weeks, he has not practiced at all. So at practice, he's still showing questionable with a shoulder, um, but he was limited. Cornerback Adoree Jackson did not practice on Wednesday with a foot injury, and he's showing as questionable. That's We'll have to definitely watch that. Um, cornerback Chris Milton as we know, has not practiced now for three weeks. The same calf is bothering him, but he's now showing still questionable. I think it's just more of a formality. Um, right now it's early, but it's looking more like he'd probably be doubtful or not even play at all. Um, tight end Delaney Walker makes the, the injury list, did not practice on Wednesday with an ankle. In the past, we've seen him not practice on Wednesday, more for you know a veteran, an uh, aged vet, getting some additional rest. Not the case, I don't believe, as we saw Last Sunday, he sat on the sideline for a long time with that angle. But right now, they're showing him as questionable. Linebacker Wesley Woodyard was limited as well on Wednesday with an undisclosed reason. And he's not showing up on the injury um, injury list. So I think that was more another veteran rest because if Jayon does not play, he'll have to get a lot more snaps again. Now, good news on the injury report, which is always nice. Ryan Suckup will be designated to be um, to be returning from the IR this week. I don't know how that's going to shake out with Cody Parkey. Reference transactions. We'll be standing tight on that. But for right now, Ryan Suckup is coming back. So that field goal issue that we had a few weeks back should be resolved. All right. So let's get down into this preview of this game. It should be good. If you remember, I circled this game, obviously. I'm sure we all circled this game at the beginning of the season. It's Marcus Mariota versus Jameis Winston, part three. See how this works out. We don't get to see that. We get Ryan Tannehill. But no need to worry. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So our passing offense right now is it's kind of weird because we're obviously working off of six weeks or more like five weeks and three quarters of Marcus Mariota passing offense now transferred over into Ryan Tannehill, which that passing offense looked pretty good on Sunday. But the statistics show us as 20th in passing completions um, with a 63.9 completion rate, which is not good um, at the time. But we'll see how it works. Last week, Ryan Tannehill boosted that percentage rate up for us a little bit. He's been efficient and accurate thus far, and hopefully he keeps that up. All right, so... We're eighth in yards per completion, which is 
kind of weird, I would say, because we're having issues completing passes. But when we do, they're for good chunks of change. So right now we're in the top 10 in yards per completion. Touchdown to inter interception ratio is 9 to 4. I, I would say mediocre is the answer I would give. It's it's good percentage-wise. 9 to 4 is, is nice, that ratio. But on the other hand, 9 touchdowns over this long. I mean, we've played, what, 7 games now? And um, 9 touchdowns through the air. Not good. We're 14th in um, quarterback rating at 95.3. So we're right down the pipe in the middle of the road. But we're dead last in giving up sacks with 31. So the Bucks will have to be stopping that def or stopping that offense, that pass offense. And uh, they bring to the table on Sunday the number 32 passing defense. And that's um, giving up 304 yards per game over the last six games because they did have a bye week last week. But um, obviously not too good. Game planning wise, hopefully we aim that way. And it should look good, especially after last week how we worked with Ryan Tannehill. The wide receivers got open, made some catches. Even the tight ends got a, got a little bit of play. Hopefully this we can take advantage of this, but we'll see. Also that pass defense is 22nd in sacks, only getting 13 on the year. And also 22nd in explosive plays, meaning Pass plays over 20 yards. They've given up 26 this year already. That's passing, but how about rushing? So we got the Tennessee Titans right now rushing the ball. We're still towards the bottom in the bottom third. We're 21st right now in yards per carry at 3.8 yards. We've been fluctuating between 3.8, 3.9, 4.0, 4.1, 4 and then now we're back down to 3.8. Um, we need to obviously pick up that yards per carry, but this, this game... As you see, when we go into their defense, will be tough. So we're um, 19th at 102 yards per game on the ground. It's just, it's not good. It's not. Even, I mean, it's in the middle-ish, but it's towards the bottom third of the league in um, rushing yards per game. I wouldn't say good at all. But the Bucks defense is extremely good, as in um, the best actually. Actually, I'm um, at this time. So you got. They're first in yards per carry, giving up, and I'm going to repeat it for you, 2.9 yards. i say it again, 2.9 yards per rush right now. Each game, they're giving up 68 yards per game. They're first, 68 yards on the ground. We're having difficulty getting yards on the ground, and especially getting chunk yards on the ground, and they're not giving up much. Should be interesting to see how that works out. Let's reference our game plan. But nonetheless, offensive efficiency, we are having difficulties with that. Obviously, third downs have been a problem over, the, over the, the entire season. We start off really bad. We've gotten a little bit better, if you will. Um, but right now, we're still you know, in the bottom third um, in the league towards the middle um, for third down efficiency. On the other hand, fourth down efficiency, we are... 30th. We've only converted one out of seven attempts. Stop going for it on fourth down. That's just my little plug to you, Vrabel. But anyways, we're one for seven on fourth down attempts. Not good. 30th in the league. On the other hand, we're bottom third in penalties. We were the least penalized or one of the least penalized teams last year. And offensively speaking, we are 30th. I'm not 30th. I'm sorry. We're in the bottom third with 46 penalties already called on us on the offensive side of the ball. Now, we're fifth, which is good, fifth in turnover differential at plus four. So that's good. We'll keep that up, hopefully turn them over. As we know, Jameis Winston had a little bit of issues the last time he started in England, down here in my backyard with five interceptions. But hopefully that turnover bug stays where it's at. So the Bucks defensive efficiency with hopes to turn over our offensive efficiency is not that great by any means. They're having issues as well with penalties. They're in the bottom third with defensive penalties with 46. And um, they're giving up a, a lot of points. Um, so the third, 30th, I'm sorry, in points at this point in time, giving up 30.8 points per game, a ton of points. So when you look at it, big picture, they're giving up a lot of points, not much on the ground, a lot in the air. They're all over the place. Turnover differential right now is negative two. I believe we'll come back to that though on their on their side. So, but let's flip the ball over. 
the Bucks get the get the ball too. We're not the only ones with the ball. So the Bucks, when they have the ball in their hand, they're passing offense. They're thirtieth in completion percentage with sixty percent at this point in time. Jameis Winston is still having issues being efficient with the ball. He throws the ball a ton and gets a lot of yardage, and he tends to throw a lot of touchdowns as well and a lot of interceptions. So, but this completion percentage is an issue for him, which is good for us. Now, on the on the other hand, he is sixth in um, completion. I'm sorry, yardage per completion at eight point one. Six in the league is pretty good. Their touchdown interception ratio is 12 to 10. Not a ton of touchdowns and a ton, I would say, a ton of interceptions. They're averaging uh, short of two a game almost. So I think that we can jump on there and, and steal one at least. Maybe Kevin Byer. He's already got a few already. But anyway, so the 24th in quarterback rating at 84.9, and they're giving up 25 sacks per game, which gives them the 30th best ranking towards the bottom. That's not good. We've been doing well with sacks. I think that we can take advantage of this as well, but we'll see. All right, passing defense, the Titans against um, that turnover-heavy Jameis Winston offensive passing attack. Um, we're ninth in the league in sacks with 19. We are 10th in the league when, when it comes to giving up explosive plays. Again, that's 20 yards or better. We've only given up 21 this year, period. Um, through the air, so that's good. Whenever mostly your pass, your explosive plays are usually through the air. We're only giving up 21 over the season. Really good for now. I would say it's a little bit better than average, but I would say pretty good going back to last year. Whenever we were getting burnt left and right, but um, we have six interceptions right now, which puts us in the top 10 at ninth in the league as well. Jameis likes to throw them, and we like to catch them. So um, look for a little bit of interceptions this week, but we'll come back to that. Bucks run offense, mediocre at best. The 21st in both yards per carry at 3.8 and yards per game at 98.2. So I'm not too worried about that as we're doing well against the run. We're actually a top 10 defense, giving up only 3.9 yards per rush, which is still not 2.8 or whatever it is the Bucks are giving up. But um, it's still top 10, which is very good. Um, when it comes down to rushing touchdowns, we'll get up. we've only given up three rushing touchdowns all season. So let's keep that up, tie up Peyton Barber, and make sure that they're not able to, to run that ball at all. No big plays. Please, no big plays. 60 minutes defense, no big plays. All right, so the Bucks offensive efficiency, not too well. Like I said, they're a negative two turnover differential, which is 22nd in the league. Um, our defensive efficiency on the other side, we have fourth best um, Thirty third down conversion rate, which is we're only giving up thirty one percent converting from um, from the defensive side. The other side is we're giving up sixteen points per game allowed. Solid. Don't want to talk about too many other teams, but the Patriots defense is looking absolutely crazy. But um, defensive efficiency going back to the Titans again penalties with thirty first thirty first in the league right now. When it comes down to penalties on defense, we get up 60 defensive penalties called them. 60. It's a lot. Special teams, the Bucks, let them go first. They're 28th with 18.9 yards per kickoff return. They are 31st with 2.8 yards. 2.8 yards on punt returns. And they are 29th in the league with only seven punts inside the 20-yard line. So when it comes to special teams, we know that special teams is kind of our forte. Um, but seven punts inside the 20? We played seven games. I guess they've only played six after the bye, but that's not even a lot. Moving along, Titans, Titans special teams. We're 21st with only 20.7 yards per kick return. I'm still waiting for, for DJ to break one of these and do, do his thing last year. Break one off, one or two kickoff returns for touchdowns would be really nice. But um, still being patient on that. We're obviously first when it comes down to punting the ball. We have the best kicker in the league in Brett Kern. He's got 25 punts inside the 20, and that's first. All right, so this week's key players, I would say a little bit surprising, borderline shocking, but here it comes. The Tennessee Titans key player quietly right now leads the team with 25 receptions and is the next Buccaneer. 
I believe that our key player will be Adam Humphreys. He hasn't scored a touchdown this year. All of our other receivers have two. I believe that he does something special. He needs to be watched out for. He's going to get this old team. We've seen in the past, whenever you get an opportunity to go and get your old team, it's time to put on your big boy gloves and go to work. So watch out for Adam Humphreys this game. Now, on the other side of the ball, huh, of course, we have the Bucks key player that we got to watch out for. He leads the team in receptions with 43 receptions. He leads the team in um, receiving yards with 662 yards. He also leads the team in touchdowns with six touchdowns. Obviously, we know who this is. It's Chris Godwin. Not Mike Evans. Chris Godwin leads the team across the board in receiving. He is the playmaker. He's got wheels. He can run. We have to watch him. He is the key player. I believe that we, hopefully we have Adoree Jackson healthy and able to come out there and play because he is our speedster. If not, then we have to be physical with them with either um, Logan Ryan or with Malcolm Butler just punching him in the mouth all day. We got to have help over the top. At the same time, it's scary because we got Mike Evans over there too. We can't just forget about him because he is a, an elite player um, on his own. So, Key players, Adam Humphreys and Chris Godwin. But, hey, let's go ahead and close this up. In summary, I can tell you right now from a preview standpoint, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are sleepy. They look like they're not that good. I would say we should go and win this game at home. Our Titans have not been consistent. We win one game and then we take one or two off. This week is the week for us to handle business that we should handle Last year, the Buffalo Bills, we lost to whenever we should have handled them. After having a big win, the Jets almost gave us a problem. There's a lot of teams that we just need to handle. This game is that game that we need to just handle. The Bucks offense, they're having issues running the ball, but they can throw the ball a ton. But Jameis Winston makes mistakes. We have to capitalize. We can get the sacks and if we don't get the sacks, we definitely need to be on the back end and get the interceptions that he's going to throw. On the flip side of that, our offense, we can expect to have struggles running the ball. We're already having difficulties with the offensive line play and running the ball this week. Hopefully, it won't be offensive line play that's the issue. Hopefully, we can turn this whole thing around and make their yards per rush go from 2.8 to 5.0. But we have to be realistic here. Use the, use the run to set up the pass, but don't expect too much from the run as they have a top tier, at the top tier rush defense in the league. On the other end, they give up a lot of yardage through the air. So the defense, you have to put them right in the middle because they're giving up a ton in the air and nothing on the ground. I say Ryan Tannehill, feast, baby, feast. Don't be shocked if Adam Humphreys has a huge game. Again, not my bold prediction. Just yet, but wait for that. Nonetheless, if you like, love, or want more of this episode or even more episodes, do me a favor, show your boy some love, click that like button, subscribe, or even hit that notifications bell. Get yourself an update for tomorrow or get yourself a notification for tomorrow's update and upload to tighten up today. Nonetheless, one question before you go, why tighten up tomorrow when you could tighten up today? <laughs>